It was the 26th of April back in 1997 when Foreman, aged 48 and the defending lineal heavyweight king, met an undefeated and much younger Lou Savarese in Atlantic City. I'm not fighting Mike Tyson, I'm not fighting Evander Holyfield because they are afraid of me. The fight between the man who was less than two years away from his 50th birthday and the man who was 31 years old was dubbed Power Brokers. People ask me, am, am I ready for the likes of Lennox Lewis, George Foreman, uh, or guys like this? And After capturing the WBA and IBF titles from Michael Moore late in 1994, George Foreman would forfeit his WBA title and make only one defense of his IBF portion, narrowly and controversially defeating little-known German fighter Axel Schultz on April 22, 1995. George is still a champion, but it would be a good rematch, but doesn't necessarily have to be in Germany. Though the IBF mandated a rematch between the two, Foreman decided against it and chose instead to forfeit the title. Foreman was the reigning lineal heavyweight champion and not looked good against Axel Schultz and Crawford Grimsley, winning decisions in both bouts. George Foreman is a 48-year-old guy. He knows where he is. He knows where he's been. He knows where he's going. Savarez was the latest Italian-American hopeful from New York State who had accumulated 36 wins without defeat against mediocre opposition, the latest being a victory over Buster Mathis Jr. Savarese, who at 31 is unbeaten, but suspiciously has never been confronted by a serious challenger. Foreman had called out Savarese after his win over Schultz, but it took two years for the bout to actually come together, in which time George had fought only once. Uh, Savarese was born in July 1965. Foreman's amateur career began about a year later in 1966. One more time in his amazing career, heavyweight legend George Foreman was an underdog upon entering the ring. Unlikely smartly sent in a shot to the light. Both men moving slowly around the ring as to avoid George's right hand. Savarese had a good start to the fight, picking up points. Backward with a double jab. There's the jab. He'll come up top with it and then go to the body. Body early. Savarese and Savarese dances along the ropes. Uppercut by Savarese. What a factor here tonight. Because Last 10 seconds of the round. Lose Savarese. Through the first couple of rounds, Foreman was pressing the action and taking Savarese's best shots, mainly his looping left hook. Working with George. Left hook up top by Savarese. Foreman lands a left hook. Savarese has a still hand going. Move his head. From the left and the right to the left and right thumb. Right. He's beginning to show a little tire. He's breathing his rest. Amazingly relaxed in the ring. I think Savarese punched the output. 64 in round number one. Great for him if he could keep it up. George is hitting him with some big, big carries. Foreman has been much more active in round number two. Foreman even showed some ability to slip some of Savarese's punches. I've heard both you and George keep your opponent from thinking that you hit him. In the long run, as we found out. Foreman sticking that jab and landing consistently. In the third round, Foreman opened up a cut along the corner of Savary's left eyelid, but it did not seem to have that big an impact right away. Foreman has always taken punch as well. And a bad starts to flow, it could affect Savarese's vision. The pass. And now working with a target, George thunders forward like a pack of up this left uppercut that George throws in there. Oh, good right body shot by Paul. Allowing him to land, not moving side to side as he did in the first round. This cannot be good for Savarese to stand in there and slug toe to toe with standing inside slugging with George. Up. When he doesn't have a lot of experience fighting. Savary seemed to pick up his pace in the fourth round and began landing more punches. This is a better heavyweight fight than some of the fighters with the guy. That's part of why the public loves Big George. You saw referee Eddie Cotton in a big fight of international liberty. Opponents did he stand right in front of him. 
really hard to beat George Foreman. Fighting the fight. Muhammad Ali didn't do this. He wants him to step around. Jab output has gone down in every round so far. He threw only 10 jabs to trading power shots. And it don't seem to bother Stephanie at all. One thing Stephanie has made up in the world for Savarese's punches don't hurt George. Foreman seemed to get a little tired in the fifth round, but Savarese did not have enough sting on his punches to take advantage of Foreman's weariness. Now Savarese is pushing George back. Push the guy around that pulls cars around. The referee is not warning him for those. Foreman, no thrills, no tricks, was his usual come forward, attack and back the other guy up self. They trade jabs after the Savarese. Savarese doing a lot of things well in rounds, but he puts his punches together rather nice. Schultz took a lot of heavy lumber and too much. George is a heavy punch punch in the past. Savarese with clean punches, and you heard him. Savarese was soon feeling the pace, more so than the man almost 20 years his senior. It looks like it was the pies. Just missed with the right hand there. Oh, that was a piece. Able to lean against Foreman without giving ground. Savarese breaks away with an uppercut, goes back to the jab. A big punch is nothing for him to take. There was plenty of good trading, with both big guys testing the other's chin. Came the right Louis Louis. Louis is a punch of that punch this round here. One, two, three times to the body here. <laughs> Referee, the recently departed Eddie Cotton, stayed pretty much out of things, letting the two get on with it and fight. Good right. Pounding one punch at a time. Yes, it could be. The one who knows what they're doing. He's been in with so many guys in sparring. It's understandable. Five, 40 seconds with him. Of old ages. Of keep up, keep up. Right hand inside by Savary. Everything Foreman throws. And keep coming back with his own. Landing this jab early. And Foreman, a master at pacing himself, came on strong in the last third of the fight, putting it on Savarese in the ninth and twelfth rounds in particular. That much more miraculous. Well, so hard in the early fights, so robotically that he wasted himself. Foreman sticking this minute Savarese in this round. Yes, he had by George. Almost inexplicably at this point. Hard and Foreman thunders back. Again, his professional career. Writing poetry about it. Hard left. Even though Savarese is fighting a 48-year-old man. To some 25-year-old man. George really does still have some stuff. A little time fight. Three punch. And a thunder. Round 11. Another war in a phone booth. He was psyching Eddie Cotton yelling he's going to hold this behind the head with a point. But I think it really was unjustified. I think that was not a... Oh, there goes Savarese. Foreman seemed to have an incredible amount of strength and stamina at his disposal in the final round, literally running at Savarese as he unleashed his slow but stiff and accurate shots. It means that all the work he's been doing, all the chopping he's done at that tree, is a professional prize fight, dancing and chasing. Way down in the 12th. Now here he comes. He's able to win the better 
The two slugged it out until the bell, Foreman unable to get the KO he wanted. I hit this guy with lead right hands and lead left hands that should have dropped anyone. I don't know where he's got the strength in the legs to do that. I still don't understand that. For the heavyweight champion of the world!